Hey, y'all. Welcome to episode 144 of Consignment Chats. And today we're putting a spotlight on it. And by it, I mean our friend Aaron. We are going to spotlight him. He has a, I don't know, well, how would you word it, ladies? A unique niche in the reselling um, world, I think. For, yeah. We, yeah, I just. I think I, it's I, very I, well branded. It's called the Reseller Newsletter. So. All right. She's going to tell you. I was going to let Aaron tell you, but Libby's going to tell you. Yeah, I stole the stage. Sorry, Aaron. (laughs) It's all good. (laughs) So we're going to let Aaron, we're going to start off and let him introduce himself. And uh, yeah, tell us a little bit about you and those initial things, where you're located, all that good stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Well, first off, thank you for having me. This is super fun already. So this is going to be great. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so my name is Aaron Brantley. I'm based out of Phoenix. So if you went to camp listing party, you know what I live in. Just crazy hot weather all the time. And winter is perfect. It's like 80 degrees. So it's like perfect weather right now. So (laughs) Samantha, you're just shaking your head. Shake your head. (laughs) It was 80 here yesterday. And I was like, it's October. What is this? (laughs) Meanwhile, I'm moving to Phoenix. I want to live in Phoenix because I can breathe there. I love it. Love we it. took her out of there kicking and screaming. I love yeah. it. We had to come home. She was not wanting to come home. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. So yeah, so I'm based out of Phoenix. Uh, I'm a reseller. I I am what I call a value reseller. So basically, if it's um, I'm going to garage sales, I'm going to thrift stores, auctions, and if I find something that I can flip for a profit, I'm buying it and selling it. And uh, yeah, as you mentioned, I do have a newsletter. It's the resellers newsletter. And the whole premise of the newsletter is, um, well, one, I was looking at all the different social media that lots of people are doing out there. So there's lots of people doing reselling YouTube channels or podcasts or uh, Instagram posts. And I just sat there. I was like, you know what? There's there's all this great stuff and everybody's doing it so well. So I was just thinking, like, what can I do that would be different? Um, that's one of the things about me is like I, I always just try to find things that are unique or weird or different. Um, things that I could go to an event and just have an interesting conversation with. So I was like, mm-hmm. uh, I just had the thought of like, are there any newsletters out there? Because I love newsletters. I love reading them. I love subscribing to the, like all different kinds. And I couldn't find one. So I'm like, well, if I can't find it, that means I got to make it. So that's what I did is created the newsletter. And the whole premise is, is shining the spotlight on the amazing thing that resellers are doing because we are like a hive mind all these resellers that we connect with and that we follow on social media that we meet at conventions, everybody has a unique perspective on things and everybody kind of has a unique skill set. So I was like, how can we bring these things together in like a written document or a publication so that we can shine the spotlight on the cool things that certain resellers are doing, but also learn from them to help us become better resellers across the board ourselves. So that's what the whole premise of the newsletter is, is just shining that spotlight on resellers so we can learn from each other to help each other grow our businesses. Wow. I'm shocked at how similar it is to the story of how consignment chats was started. Right? Like there was nothing there and we're like, all right, well, you know, we want it. So, all right, let's do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, exactly. Uh, yeah. That's so cool. I want to throw in there real quick for anybody who's listening right now, because I know there are people out there that go newsletter, email, eek, I get so many. Aaron does not spam your email. Mm-hmm. I love it. I signed up with him right off the bat when I met him, which your intro let me know why it is we met because you look for unique, weird items and that would be us. So that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's I how we connect. Same thing. Oh, it my brain didn't sense. go there, but that is so correct. So it all makes sense yes. now. So but sweet. that is the one thing I... I liked him from the first sentence because you are such a nice guy and very knowledgeable and it was just natural but the emails when I signed up I'm like I'm gonna do this I'm gonna support him oh my gosh I love it so much I love that you don't spam you actually are somebody who I actually open and read because the spam stuff when it keeps coming every day every two days I delete 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 I can't it's too much for me so I want to put that out there to anybody listening now if you do not like that sign up. I mean, he does a great job, not only with what's in there, but I promise you, you won't get spammed. There's not going to be it relevant. Yes. yes. I appreciate that. That's the goal is 
you know, I try to only put things out that actually add value. Um, so I try to do, I try to do something, you know, every week. So, however, sometimes there's just nothing to report. And so I'm never going to spam. So I only put things out when there's something of value that can actually go out to the community, because I understand exactly what you're talking about, Molly. It's those, you know, you sign up for a newsletter or you sign up for something like some business or whatever. And next thing you know, I'm getting 37 emails every other day mm-hmm. that are just, they're just piling up in my inbox and taking up space. I never want to do that. That's never my goal. It's only if there's something valuable to be added, that's when I send out a publication. And so sometimes that means there's some weeks I'm not going to send something out because I don't have anything valuable to give in that week. And I'm never going to spam people for it. Like it's, it's not worth that to me. When you first said that you loved newsletters and loved signing up for stuff like that, I was like, oh my God, because, <laughs> because we know that's not the norm. The norm is, like you said, 37 things in one week or a day sometimes. Oh my gosh. And I don't want to see your email inbox. That sounds terrible. That's- <laughs> this, little, this little chat that we just had right now, all of our listeners and viewers right now, there was all of them. There was kind of this group. <sighs> yes <laughs> okay this is <laughs> all right now we i don't usually like to call our guests out but since molly didn't uh aaron you said you are trying to no you are doing it oh, i appreciate yes. that. Doing it. you are not trying you are that. doing it molly usually calls out anybody that says that but it's, yep, you can't you, you're doing it yeah i appreciate that totally. thank you for saying that yeah all right so how all right, so we know how it was born. Like, did you always have like a a penchant for the written word, or is that your method of communicating? What did you do before reselling? Are you full time? So many questions. <laughs> Hold on, twelve yeah. questions in one. Word for you, so you can keep up with them. <laughs> <laughs> so, so go on. Yeah, I, I'd be happy to share my reselling story, my journey. Um, uh, because it's it's a weird story. Like again, yes. I I yes. I, pers- <laughs> I like to do things weird. I just like being weird. Um, it's it's making my life colorful. So um, and I say colorful as I'm wearing like all black right now. It's like <laughs> totally. <laughs> I get so, that. Um, yeah, it, it's great. So story slightly different than I think most people. Um, so got into reselling and I'm a part-time reseller. I work a full-time job. Um, I think most people do. And it just works for me. For me, it's a, it's a hobby. It's, I, I like to say to people who I talk to about reselling, it's, you know, some people who work full-time jobs, they go to the golf course and hit a bucket of balls to relax. For me, I go to garage sales and thrift stores. It's my form of golf and stress relief. So I do it for fun. Um, it's, it, it's not my main source of income. So I just want to be very upfront with that. Um, I used to do it for sushi, so I totally understand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got to do it for something, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> so for me, though, before I started doing reselling, I was actually uh, a professional auctioneer. So I was, I'm was i a professionally trained auctioneer. That's what I used to do for my living. Um, so oh. working in that world, <laughs> Libby, I just see your being like, wait, hold I'm up. I'm shocked. What? I'm shocked. Okay. It's hard <laughs> to well, discuss me. I'm shocked is because you're speaking so clear and slowly right now. It just doesn't go. Oh, pre- <laughs> <laughs> you know, you give me some caffeine and we'll rev up that motor and that auction year will come out. So, um, <laughs> so that's what I used to do for my profession. My full-time job was auctioneering. So uh, I went to school for it. I got trained up into it. And as working as an auctioneer, that's how I actually got introduced into reselling. And the way it was is, you know, I would go to the auctions, I would go to people's estates or, and, and we did a variety of different types of auctions with the company I was with. So we were doing, uh, you know, business liquidations, bankruptcies, just the state liquidations. Um, you know, we had a, a community auction that people would bring their stuff to. So we were doing a whole variety of types of auctions. And what would happen is, um, I would, you know, I would put all this time in, you know, sourcing items from, you know, consigners or trying to book business with, you know, businesses to do their liquidations, whatever it may be. And we would do these auctions and then I would see people show up and it just seemed like they were buying everything in sight. And I'm like, I just couldn't understand, like, why would one guy come here and buy up? 13 tables, like 13 kitchen tables and, you know, a thousand pieces, a thousand tools. Like 
they were just buying up everything. And then I would see them loading up trailer after trailer and just hauling it off. And I'm like, what am I missing here? And so I just started talking to them. I'm like, what are you guys doing? Like, why do you need 13 kitchen tables? Or <laughs> why do you need, like, why do you need every piece of porcelain that we have? I, what am I missing? And that's when they introduced me. They're like, well, what we do is we take it home and we just have a garage sale and we just resell it all. And I was like, wait, you huh? can actually do that? Like, that's a thing. <laughs> and, and so they were resellers. And so that's when I was introduced to like this whole world of reselling. And the crazy thing is I was seeing how much that they were making. So they were doubling, tripling, quadrupling their money. And I, at that point, I, you know, I'm thinking like, I'm in the wrong business. Like, why am I auctioneering this stuff? I should be selling this stuff at a garage sale or something. So like myself. they were out earning, I'm not asking for what you earned or anything, but they were out earning you oh, with that model. hundred yeah. oh, okay. All right. I have no idea what auctioneers make. I was just guessing. Okay. It depends. You know, it, it yeah. depends on what kind of auctioneer you are. For me, it was, I was working for a small family, like family company. So I wasn't making that much. I would make a commission off of my sales and I was receiving, you know, just my hourly rate and things like that. But these guys, they were making thousands of dollars every single one of our auctions. Now, keep in mind, they were spending thousands of dollars. So you have right. to have some of that capital to get in and get started. I mean, well, at the scale that they were doing it at, they had been doing this for a while. So they had the capital to go in and buy the inventory to then go resell. But the crazy thing I learned, too, is you don't have to have that much money to start. So the first thing that I ever flipped was actually at that auction where I found this little bin that just had like, it, I kid you not, it had a CPAP machine. It had a an iron wood little elephant that was missing a tusk and just some like really random oddball stuff just in this little tote that it appeared to have been looked over when we were setting up the auction. I bought it for $2.50. Like I took it back to the auction a few months later and just resold it at the auction. And I made maybe like $12, $12.50, like not a ton of money off of it. But that was my first flip. I 10x uh -huh. my money. So it's it like, cool. Now I got 12. It got me. I'm like, this is kind of cool. Like, mm -hmm. so give me some more. Give me some more. <laughs> give me some more. Give me some more. Like, so, so it's crazy. Just, but I mean, and I tell people this now when you're trying to get into it, it's like you don't need a lot of money to start. You really Especially don't. Especially if you do consignment. You need zero. Exactly. Right. You need zero. <laughs> All you need is a little bit of grit and creativity. Mm -hmm. Money. So that's when I got introduced to it. And then when I really started taking it, you know, more of like a kind of like my form of golf um, is actually when I, uh, so I was auctioneering up in Idaho. This was a few years back. But so when I moved down to Phoenix, I, it's, it was just kind of funny how it worked. I had this jar of change and I call it the jar of change challenge. And I've written about it in the newsletter. So you, if you're, Sign up for the newsletter. You can go read the article. That's um, where Cam. Oh, that's where that came from. I didn't know that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The right. list perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh, so the list cool. perfectly. They just did the jar change change yeah. challenge. So um, I worked with Cam on it. He reached out to me and I helped him. You know, explain what we what I did. He's but our number one fan. Did you know that? <laughs> he's a he's a C chats groupie. Yeah. We love, I love Cam. It. Cam's amazing. <laughs> Cam, Cam is amazing. I love that guy. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so I had a jar of change and I was just like, you know what? Like, I'm curious, like, how much is in here? I cashed it in, it was like 50 bucks. I'm like, let's see what I can do with this. So, I, you know, knowing what I know, I went to another auction. I spent like 30 some dollars. And, you know, one of the items I bought was this punching bag, like a full size punching bag for $12.50. Yeah. And I brought it home, cleaned it up, and 15 minutes later, had it sold for 80. Like, mm -hmm. so. It just shows like there you can make money doing this and you don't need a lot of money to start. You can do the consignment route or just go get your change jar. Literally just mm -hmm. take that. And all it takes is one item. And and I tell people, you know, start reselling what you know. So for me, it's like I went, I knew auction. That's my background. That's my I, I understand that industry. I understand that business. And I understand just from my training and having worked in it. I can walk into a room very easily and see the valuable items that most, most people would probably overlook just because I've sold them before at auctions or I know how to value things or do the research really quick and get things at a super steep discount, which when you do that, 
it makes reselling super easy because I don't have to sell things for a premium price. I could take that punching bag and sell it for $40 and I'm still making a killing. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's kind of where it all just snowballed from there. Awesome. I, now I okay. love auctions so much. It is my favorite thing. My son and I are just like auction junkies. Like that is our hobby. That's our golf is going to auctions and oh. we've got some incredible things. Sorry. So yeah, I'm having yeah, a fangirl no, moment no, a little bit. Great. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Like I, I went to my first auction this summer. It was across the street from my house and I could hear them auctioning from my office. So I had to go check it out and I'm hooked, but luckily we don't, or unfortunately, either way, we don't have a lot around here. So I don't, I probably won't have another opportunity until next year. Okay. I got to know on the recently on the trash to cash podcast, <laughs> Carrie and Dave were talking about how Carrie used to be an auctioneer. And he said that he didn't do the there's like classes you can take to do the certain languages and how fast you can go. Or if you're a slower auctioneer, what was your style? And did you have any additional training? Yeah. So I went to auctioneer school. I actually went to school for it where they trained us on how to do the auction near chance. So um, I was the fast paced auctioneer. I was the, I mean, at this point it's like, I better do it. Right. So yeah. Yeah. You know, I didn't know if we were like allowed to ask you to do it. <laughs> yeah. Samantha. All right. Sell Samantha. Sample for us and sell Samantha. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> I think that's illegal, but I'll sell something. Um, yeah. So I would, I would, you know, it's, there you go. I was selling my phone, for example, you know, it's, Already, folks, we're going to sell the phone. Better to win, better to buy. And everybody give me 100 for When you go 100, I'm 100 all, but now two. And everybody give me 200 all, but now three. Better to win, better to buy. Would you give me 300 all, but now four? I'm 400 all, but now five. Last call, $400. Sold your way for $300. So, it, yeah. Yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I'll take my bow. I'll take my bow. So, <laughs> yeah. So, I was. I just want to point out that too. Carrie couldn't do that on demand. So, good job. <laughs> uh -huh. Carrie? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Wow. So like, how long does it take somebody to learn how to do that? Like generally, I, I, that like the auctioneer, it's called the auctioneer chance. Is that what you yep, said? It's an auction. It's an auctioneer chance. So that's, okay. what they, that's what they call it. Honestly, it didn't take very long. Actually, really? I can teach you the exercises to get you going. We can do this together. This will be fun. Oh, oh really? Lord. All right. Yeah, you want to do it? Oh my God. My son is going to die. Oh my gosh. She's going to be so <laughs> excited. Okay, so in auctioneer school, the, there's a there's a chant, and and so it's kind of like anything that we do, um, where you just learn the basics, and then as you get more proficient, you kind of tweak it to your own style, and like you add your own little flavor to it. So, but the basic is we would start with this phrase: "It's I'm at a one dollar bidder now, two now, two. Would you give me two? So it's I'm, and there's a there's a beat to it. So it's I'm at a one dollar bidder now, two now, two. Would you give me two? Got that? I'm at a one dollar okay, bid now. Would you give me? Yeah. So I am at a one dollar bidder now. Two now. Two. Would you give me two? All right. Let's do this, uh, ladies. All right. Do it together. I'm, I'm at a one dollar bidder now. One dollar. Would you give me two? Would you give me two? Would you give me? Give me two? Yep. You give me that was two. pitiful. <laughs> I'm going to have to like, I'm going to have to cut this out, make a reel out of like a training reel for Instagram, and <laughs> practice it. For those so of you on podcast, I greatly apologize for however this is coming across. <laughs> it's probably better on podcast. Probably, probably way better on podcast than it is on YouTube. That's amazing. <laughs> so you do that and then you just increase the number by one. So then it's, I'm at a $2 bidder now, three, now three. Would you give me three? I'm at a $3 bidder now, four, now four. Would you give me four? And as you do that, you just slowly speed it up. So I'm at a four dollar bidder now. Five now. Five. Would you give me five? Five dollar bidder now. Six now. Six. Would you give me six? Six dollar bidder now. Seven now. Seven. Would you give me seven? Seven dollar bidder now. And so you just slowly speed it up as you go, and you develop that cadence, that chant. Right. It's not as complicated as I thought it was going to be. He exactly. So really, he just got ripped off. I think. <laughs> I'm You're a good <laughs> teacher. Wow. Well, thank you. I, this I'm, is I'm why I that. see. This is one thing I can't teach in a newsletter. I got to say that. Like, <laughs> all right. So, all right. That's, I, I'm very curious. Now that I know this history, I'm like, I, and you're so dynamic. Your personality is so dynamic. And you were an auctioneer. And then you went into writing a newsletter. Yeah. So, before I got into the newsletter, I tried to do 
YouTube videos. Um, and so I used to do the thing where I wear my GoPro and I go do a lot of what these guys were doing. Um, and that was super fun because as part, like, I'm really just, I love creative, like creative endeavors. So like, I love editing. I love, um, like, I, I love being on stage. So like, that's why auctioneering was so great for me. It's like, I love being in front of people. I love performing in a sense. Um, so like, I loved the video. I, so I would go out and I would make YouTube videos. Um, I just realized though, as I was doing that, I realized that there were so many other people doing it. And so I believe in the philosophy and my wife will attest to this. Okay. Um, I believe in the philosophy. If you, if you want to stand out, you got to be the girl in the red dress. And so for me, I was like, if everybody's making YouTube videos about reselling, I'm just another guy in the crowd. What can I do to make me mm. stand out a little bit more so that people will hear my voice so I'm not drowned out in the crowd? And that's when I was like, hey, a newsletter would be would be like me wearing a red dress. And Absolutely. so that's why I started the newsletter. Okay, yeah. are you going to Boss? Uh, up in the air right now about it. So I got a ticket for it, but I got another, I literally have an auction, a charity auction I'm doing like that same week. Oh. And it's like, do I go to boss or do I help a charitable organization raise $300,000? I'm like, <laughs> I can't even, sure. I can't even fight for you to come to boss because I mean, like, oh, I know now it would feel horrible, but no, yeah. now we can't I, even guilt them. Like this totally sucks. So, I was yes, going to ask a, you to wear a red dress at boss, but instead, please, say that do it, please do it at the charity. I think that would be even better. Okay. So this is actually, I'll send this is what I'll do. I'll send you the video. So when I do charity auctions, um, mm -hmm. so <laughs> Oh God, he does wear a red note. dress. This Here is, we go. This is kind of my side note. This is actually a legit thing. Um so okay, so I met I'm just gonna tell you a quick story because it'll like explain like the red dress principle. Yeah. So I met my wife going to church and I was like at the time I was like, you know, going to this congregation, there was like lots of guys, you know, it's like a lot of like college guys and stuff like that. I'm like you know, I want to stand out. So like all the guys that go to church, they were usually wearing like, you know, blue suits or black suits or gray suits. And I'm like, I don't want to be the guy who just wears another suit and fits in. It's like, I want to stand out. Like I want to be able to like approach some girls at the time and I like be able to talk to them and stuff. So I got a maroon colored suit that's pinstriped, like Ooh. full on. Gangsta. I, and it stood out and so when i met my wife i was literally wearing that suit <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome and she she tells me now she's like she's like honestly she's like i didn't like it at first but she's like <laughs> but i get it like <laughs> it stuck with her obviously oh my gosh i love and that so, so much i wear it to auctions now when i do charity because i only do charity auctions now that's that's not what i do full-time anymore i only do charity mm -hmm. auctions I'll wear the red suit because it's like my standing yes. out. So I'll send you a video when I send you the information for yes, and pictures or whatever. I'll, there's a video of the auction I did last year of me in the red suit. So I'll send it to you. Oh, I love it. That's I love awesome. it so much. All right. So we're learning an auctioneer chant. We're learning uh, how to, how to pick up women. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll Guys, say this. Let me, let me throw one more thing. Here. Let me let me throw one more thing because this is a principle that it's it's actually helped me as reselling too, um, the the principle of the red dress, right? So because I want to make this valuable for everybody here. So um, when reselling, one of the things that I try to do is when I'm putting pictures or when I'm reselling items, I'm asking myself, what can I do to make my listing stand out? Like how can I put mm -hmm. the red dress on my oh. listing? So what are the words that I can use? What are the pictures and like Love the it. backgrounds or angles that I can do to make my listing be the one that stands out when I pull up eBay oh. and there's 30 listings of all the same items? How can I get the person to click mine? And it's yes. the one that looks good. It's the one that has interesting words. It's the one that hits all the keywords. So mm -hmm. figure out how to red dress up your consignment or, or your listings you're yeah. going to get more sales because you yes. stand out.
I've been looking at that with photos a lot lately is trying to get a different angle. You don't necessarily need the entire teddy bear in your first picture. You can just have a cute angle on its face and or whatever is like the showcase part of that teddy bear. And then your second photo can be the whole photo because people are going to look at least two or three. And you can do that. I was even running comps the other day. I comped something. It was a Sesame Street vintage train toy, the pull long toy. And there's tons listed. I'm going to sell it locally. But um, I was scrolling through comps and I'm like, same sideways view, train, train, train. And then one of them had it coming at you. And I was like, oh, dang. And they're sold for more. Hmm. Exactly. I love creative photography. Yeah. Well, shoot, I have difference. not done that at all. I have never even considered doing that. It's like, what's the quickest way to get this done? Done. But I recently sold an Avon, one of those out. advent calendars, and every single listing had the whole calendar hanging on the wall. That was my second picture. My first picture was the mouse, that little mouse that every everything is so sought after. Does it have the mouse with it? And I had the mouse on, clipped onto it like you could see it was in the calendar. But I mean, that thing sold, that was sold very mouse. quickly. And the lady that messaged me was like, she said... I knew you had the mouse. I want this. <gasps> yeah. Exactly. yeah I know. <laughs> so like, oh, Samantha, you said something there too that was really interesting and that's the item sold for more, which is another mm-hmm. really cool thing. It's it's not so much just the item itself, um, but there's a, there's a thing I love. It's called story selling, right? It's with the pictures, you know, a picture's worth a thousand words. And I firmly believe that. So with the picture that I take, what's the story that the viewer of that picture will start telling themselves about that item? And if the picture, if the story that the person starts telling themselves has an an emotional attachment or some sort of meaning, they're willing, like they will pay more for the same item just Mm -hmm. because they feel an emotional attachment and they start telling themselves stories about the item that you're trying to sell. So the packaging of the item, the the item doesn't have to change at all, but it's how you present and package the item that makes all the difference. And people will pay more because they have that emotional attachment. They're telling themselves a story, which means that they have a higher perceived value of the item. So they will pay more for the same item just by a picture, an angle, putting a background on it, creating that emotion makes a difference. What was it in eBay it. Open, uh, Rebecca, Mike, they did a survey. I forget if it was at the sneak peek or eBay Open where they did. They asked what percentage of purchases are made based on nostalgia and emotion. I, sorry. So that based is. on the way I photograph and sell stuff, I said like 10%. But the actual number was like, I think it was close to 90, if not over 90. Yeah. It was like so- the vast majority. And I'm like, what? I gotta I'm a 90s this. kid and I everything I look at I'm like oh, I had that when I like I totally feel that I don't necessarily buy that way because I'm super cheap and frugal but <laughs> I understand why my generation wants everything that was on that TV commercial when they were a kid I want every Ninja Turtle I want every Barbie dream house that I didn't get or maybe I only had one and I wanted the one with the elevator not the staircase or I feel that when I see certain items I'm like ooh, I want that. Do I have a reason to have a Barbie dream house? No, it's nostalgic and I will buy one. So (laughs) let me throw something at you because you're exactly right, Samantha. So I reckon like, and just an idea is when people are putting their listings, instead of just taking all the pictures of just the Barbie dream house, whatever it is, put a picture of like the uh, screenshot from the commercial as Mm -hmm. one of your pictures. So when people see it, it's like, oh my gosh, that's the commercial I remember when I was a kid. That's the actual item. So you can start creating that emotional attachment to your item just by putting a screenshot of what the packaging used to look like from the commercial or something along those lines. And even I watched, I was watching something the other day, I was streaming it and there was a commercial because I'm frugal and cheap. And yes, there are commercials on my streaming apps. (laughs) And there was a Barbie, it was for a Barbie bus or whatever. They have started doing their commercials back the way they used to with the, oh, mom, I need that. And and they're reverting everything back because it hooked people. That's what got people in. So, and then, then again, I was like, oh, I wish I had a kid to buy that for because it's just like when I was little. (laughs) Exactly. 
Oh, wow, so it. this is not at all where I thought this spotlight was going to go. <laughs> I, know, I'm loving I mean, I, this is just far exceeded any expectation <laughs> I have. I have so many like I have a, I have notes here, guys. I have notes on of things I need to do. do. I don't. You should not be surprised by this. We don't follow. You know how many notes I have? Zero. Because we <laughs> chat. Come on. I mean, we talked about red dresses, picking up women, auctioneering. He was like, right? oh, like, this is great. And we're 30 <laughs> minutes into it. So <laughs> all over the place here. Oh, my gosh. I love it. I love it. We're covering so, it all. What is what was your favorite spotlight that you ever did? Spotlight? This one right here. Like, oh. Oh. <laughs> That's a great this answer. This one, this is fun. I mean, I mean, we've talked about red dresses. We talked about my red suit. We've talked about the newsletter. We've talked about how my whole life. We've talked about auctions. Like this is the best. Uh, now I need to know uh, what haven't you told us? Right? What are, what are we missing in this? No, well, no, we'll I don't the, think we we'll want to. Yeah, no, we'll leave the black book up there. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I guess we need to meet his wife at some point. Yeah, right. Oh, no, she's an angel. She's an angel. She is the best. Oh, I love. <laughs> she's that. very, su- she's very supportive of my reselling, but she's also very like she's not afraid to say like, yeah, it's not my thing. <laughs> so. All right, all right. So like Samantha's heavy, like he oh, knows yeah. nothing of her reselling life. It's like you two will never Samantha's. <laughs> yep, you'll never meet him in person. He he sat through a lovely dinner with Libby and he was like that was that was a lot of reselling. <laughs> and I'm like actually oh, we were Libby. Like, like, <laughs> I was like actually we we hardly talked about work at all and he's like mm, it was too much. It was too much. <laughs> You know, I'm I like, often so you- do get that response of being too much for people. <laughs> That's hilarious. I shouldn't be surprised. I should not be surprised. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, Aaron, what do you see for the future? I mean, do you have like where do you see this going? What do you what do you what's your future view on what you've got? Yeah. Here? Uh, that's a great question. So for me, I actually don't really have a set goal. It's just I do it because I love it. So I mean, th- I don't really, I, for me, it's like, I don't do this to make money. I'm not making money off the newsletter or anything like that. It's, you know, I work a full time job and, and uh, me and my wife, we do, you know, we're, we're very blessed and, and fortunate with our circumstances. So for me, it's just, this is just fun. So as long as it's fun, I'm going to keep doing it. So. Love it. And I got to say, I watched you um, on that last day in Phoenix. Kevin had a long layover. I had a long, you know, we were we were there forever. Our stuff got pushed back. And I watched you sit and meet with him. And I don't know if it was just the spotlight you were doing with him or whatever you guys were working on on that couch. You sat there forever and I thought you were nuts. But the look, both of you were just in your right, You're just like, dropping you... truth bombs all over the place today, <laughs> Samantha. <laughs> Well, you guys were just both in your element. You got one for Molly, too? Where's <laughs> mine? No, we got no you, guys, not... you guys were loving it. Yeah, we <laughs> talked for a long time. Uh, me and Kevin, we spent a lot of time at, at Camp Listening Party just talking. We were talking reselling, but we were also talking a lot of business strategy as well. Because, mm-hmm. you know, I, so for me, you know, I've had the chance to work for really small companies. You know, the auction house I worked for was just, you know, I think maybe 15, 20 people, really small company. You know, now I work for a Fortune 100 company with, you know, 90 plus thousand employees. So I've had this opportunity to work with a whole variety, multiple companies, different sizes, and be able to learn uh, different things, uh, different business strategies, and and various things like that. So, yeah, I had a very long conversation with Kevin. We were talking a lot of business strategy about, you know, how do you, how, do, how can you grow a reselling business or what are things that you can do to extend your reach further than what you're doing now? So the big thing that him and I had talked about was the importance of uh, an email list. We were talking a lot about how do you build an email list and what are strategies that you can do that? Um, one of the things that I, I came across when it came to doing the YouTube or even like Instagram and Facebook is it's, you can build a large audience. But how do you directly communicate to a specific individual within that audience? So, for example, on YouTube, you get your subscribers, 
but how do I actually get in touch with that one subscriber that just subscribed? And so we were talking about different strategies and different things to put together to be able to drive traffic from whether it be your YouTube channel, whether it be your Instagram, to build an email list so that you can have that direct communication with your subscribers. So two things. One, I want to put in there that for those that are listening, don't know, we just assume everybody knows when we say Kevin, who we're talking about. This oh, is oh Kevin. yeah. Kevin, Kevin of- Commonwealth Picker. Commonwealth Picker. Yeah. So, that- so Brian Burke, if you're listening, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kevin, the Commonwealth Picker. You That's sat right. with them at Camp Listing Party. You might remember, remember that. Brian? Yeah. You didn't okay. know who he was? Well, yeah. no, you do. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Now I've totally lost my other thought. How did we end that? What did you end that with? Ah. I don't know. You were going to say like Samantha's fantastic. I've missed you Samantha's so much. Samantha's fantastic. Yeah. She's just, yeah, I don't know what we do yeah. without her. Da, 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 there da. we go. Oh my gosh. We go. What were you, what Commonwealth were you picker, we're, building an email list. Building an email list. Working together. Direct, directing Direct contact to you... your to your audience base. And I, I, I'll say this. Anybody can build an email list. You don't have to necessarily have... Um, You don't necessarily have to have a YouTube channel or anything like that, but just finding a way to build an email list is it's a really valuable asset in any business. And I saw, I've seen this from working for different companies and even now with my newsletter, um, I'm able to build a list and have direct communication with any of my subscribers. So there's a lot of upside for anybody in reselling, especially if you have a niche that you like to sell in, if you can build an email list, it actually makes selling a lot easier because for example, if I sell golf clubs, and that's something I like to sell a lot of, um, because I can get them cheap out here in Arizona. Everybody golfs in the winter, so it's kind of an odd time. Most of the country's you know golfing in the summer, but here you golf in the winter, so it's kind of a really weird niche market. I can get golf clubs for really cheap. If I sell lots of golf clubs, if I can build an email list of people who buy golf clubs or golf gear or supplies, anytime I get golf clubs, I can just send a quick email saying, hey, I have these clubs. And now I can sell them direct to my consumer, which means all the sales I get from that email list, I keep all the money instead of having to pay fees to eBay or any of the other selling services that we might use. So, and I know exactly who my target customer is because they've signed up or given me their email saying, I'm specifically looking for these things. Uh So yeah, it makes, for me, it's like, it, it can make selling so much easier when you just have those lists that you can just send a quick email to because you know what they're looking for. Yeah. And I mean, I think I keep thinking about um, Jason Spangler. We did a spotlight on him. He does in the Boy Scout niche. And that is his number one piece of advice to anybody operating within a niche. And his number one thing of how to reach people and be successful is his email list. Yeah. And he really puts a lot of, you know, importance on that. But the difference... All right. So he's in a very specific niche. So we're in a lot of us, a lot of us, not all of us are in a very broad market, right? Like we sell everything. I always say sell everything, including the kitchen sink. So it it can be a little bit more challenging. I think we've navigated that by figuring out who our ideal customer is and what we market. But um, when you're talking to somebody maybe who's like an everything seller, like even like even Kevin, um how do you t- tell people to start that and like narrow down their their focus yeah. on getting the right people no that's a really great point it, i'll say this in my opinion it's much more challenging to build an email list when you're an everything seller yeah because who is your target market right mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, or who, who is your ideal customer? What is it? I, I like to call them a customer avatar. Like who is the specific mm-hmm. person who would, who I'm going for as a value seller. It's really challenging to do that. This is, um, it's the difference between what I like to call like the Louis Vuitton sellers versus the Walmart sellers, right? Mm-hmm. Walmart yeah. sells to everybody because they're just a value based seller. Louis mm-hmm. Vuitton sells to a very specific niche of people who want that specific product. Mm -hmm. So value sellers are going to have a much more challenging time building that email list or building a list to sell to. However, they can build a list uh, doing other things. Like, for example, if you're a value seller, I would love to see a list. I would love to see somebody do this where they give sourcing advice 
for different places that they go source from building a list or building an email <laughs> or, or something like that. Um, like if, if somebody built, for example, an Excel spreadsheet with here are 10 auction websites that you can go to where they will ship you wholesale pallets and just all you got to do is sign up for an email. That's super valuable for people. Right. So, so that being said, can... if you would like to know your ideal customer, please go to consignmenttraps.com, click on that, add your email to our email list, and we will send you that. <laughs> yes. So yeah. Can you, we already have that all set up. Isn't that cool? <laughs> to create your <laughs> ideal customer. It's perfect. So it's not for our it's... consignment businesses. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. So it's, it's a little more challenging for value sellers to build an email list if they're just trying to sell things to people. So they need to find something of value to give to their customers as well to get that contact mm. information. If you are just more of a niche seller, so a perfect example of someone I think of is like Kevin uh, Ken Hustleby. He does mm -hmm. shoes. Shoes yep, are his right. thing. So it's going to be much easier for him to build an email list to sell to because the people who are following him, they want shoes. Yes. That's the one thing that he's doing. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah, I, I totally yeah. understand that. So for consignment chats, we have an email list because we know exactly who we're selling to. Now, I have an email list for my business, Conchi Consignment, but because I sell everything, it doesn't really work for me and I don't have any value yeah. add. And that's so that's OK. That's OK. That's OK. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but I it's understand just, the it's difficulties just an of that. Yeah just an additional asset that people can add to their business it's not like you you can be successful without it and you can be successful with it it just comes yeah. down to what do you want to do with your business yeah like so samantha is, could really you could do that i'm sorry go ahead molly i'm gonna forget it again this is what i was gonna say earlier with all this knowledge that you were putting out on the couch you and kevin together in phoenix the two of you just came up with one of the being speakers at boss next year this is a great topic for the two of you to do a session on at boss just saying it that would be, could be really, really fun. nice it would be really I, nice to have somebody speak that really understands ideal customers or your avatar or the how to grow your business and the email yeah. list. i mean i think that is just um that's great content for yeah I appreciate yeah. that. It's something I'm very passionate about talking about. So it because it, it I, I've seen this where when people are able to identify their exact customer avatar, when they know exactly who they're selling to. And I can tell you this, when I built my newsletter, I sat down and I figured out who are the people that will sign up for this newsletter? What do they look like? What's their age bracket? What kind of income do I think they're making? And you break it down into extreme detail. So I have a picture in my mind of when somebody is signing up for my newsletter or when somebody's coming to buy something from you, I know exactly what they're going to look like, relatively speaking, because I've built it out. And so it makes it, it gives crystal clear clarity to your business. And when you have clarity, then the decisions that you make within the business, they become so much clearer and so much uh, higher leveraged opportunities because you know who you're serving. So, I'm, and I'm pretty sure, you sure all know he this. is one of us because, like, this is what we say <laughs> all the time. Like, except you just said it a little more eloquently than we do. <laughs> yeah, because we get up, we're like, if you haven't done your ideal customer, you better download it and do it now. And we're here to help if you need it. Like, you have to have your ideal customer. You have you need to. to do it. You have it to saves, do it. You it saves so much time when you can, when you're trying to make any kind of business decision, and you can all of a sudden put that person in your head. Yeah. So yes. Did you name like ours her? is named Chrissy. Samantha's is um Stephanie. Stephanie. Um, <laughs> how many kids, like we know how many kids they have. We know where they live, what neighborhood, what they drive, what radio yeah. station they listen to, what streaming apps they have. <laughs> like yep. super you get specific. So crazy details. Yeah. 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 So I did one when I was doing um I was I did one, they're Pam and Jim, because I like the office. So <laughs> Yes. Again, he's your hey, wait, did living. you know I grew up and live in Scranton, Pennsylvania? No way. <laughs> yes, I do. I went to the University of Scranton. Yes. Oh, that's amazing. My uncle was also, my uncle's funeral home was also mentioned on the office. But all right. So anyway. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, the connections. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. So ideal customer. 
I'll say this. This has helped me. This has actually saved my butt a lot of times having an ideal customer or that customer avatar. When you're sourcing, if I'm looking at an item and I can't picture the person who's going to buy this, I don't mm-hmm. buy it. Yes. So like, it yeah, if I'm taking it to butt. a level I haven't taken it before, I don't take it. Did. I don't take her sourcing with me. You I don't? don't no, I don't think Chrissy is sourcing with you. I don't put that in my mind. She needs to take me sourcing with her. No, because then I wouldn't be able to buy anything. You'd tell me no on everything. <laughs> you wouldn't even let me get the car and drive away. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. So, all right. So here, all right. So this is what I where I see a lot of resellers get caught up, and I'm 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 pretty sure going to answer this in a way that makes me really happy is they can't find a distinction between their ideal customer for their business and talking to other resellers. Like generally Uh, those are two separate audiences. So do you have two separate ideal customers? Do you have one for your value reselling and one for your reseller newsletter? Resellers? Can you? 100%. Yes. Can you 100%. tell that we loved eBay Open last week and the fact that everybody in there was sharing their store to all these other resellers that weren't going to buy from them? That's the I- problem. So resellers are not your market. Mm-hmm. Not Resellers usually don't buy from other resellers. And when they are buying from other resellers, it's because they're trying to get a deal to then resell that item to yes. their other customers. Correct. Yes. So you have to know. So like, for example, the my my newsletter is not for buyers. I don't use my newsletter to sell things, to sell value items that I source. I'm not trying to sell my items to my newsletter because that's not my market. The newsletter is for resellers. It's to help resellers become better resellers and tapping into the knowledge base of all the other resellers. However, for me, my value customer, my value avatar, completely different person. Yep. So, mm-hmm. and sometimes it just depends on what I buy. So like, I like, again, like I said, I like to buy a lot of golf clubs. So I'll buy golf clubs, but I know exactly I'm trying to sell the golf clubs, uh, usually to people within their twenties, thirties or forties, usually men. They usually, um, if I'm selling older golf clubs, I'm selling them to people who are trying to get into golf. It's mm-hmm. their first, you know, so they're not willing to spend a whole lot of money on, you know, brand new Callaway or Titleist golf clubs. So I know my demographic and I know how to market it and price it to fit that demographic. Whereas sometimes like I'll also do like lots of video games, kind of this similar group. It's men that are probably between the ages of, you know, 18 to 40 who have that nostalgic niche where you know they're going to be the ones buying the wii video games or the xbox one video games so i'm when i buy oh. things i know who i'm going to sell it to before i pay for it guys yep. rewind rewind do people still rewind hit the replay <laughs> what he just said is so business boosting and so incredibly important especially if you are a reseller and a content creator Listen to it again because it will boost. It will boost your business. I mean, know your audience. I, Teresa, Katie, Vicky, Boss Reseller Remix. You need him to speak on this topic <laughs> because he's saying it so well, and I'm just yes. I'm yep, yep. Actually, I, I think that. Libby, the two of you could get up there and rock it out. Oh my gosh. Like, I I think this is just so important and something that's not talked about enough um, in the reselling community. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Love it. Try to drive. If you (laughs) listen to our past episodes, you'll hear us try to drive this home over and over. So it's so nice. Well, I appreciate um, the fact that you all are talking about it because I'll say this, it makes me sad seeing resellers struggle. mm -hmm. You know, it it makes, because he, you don't have to struggle. Like that's the thing. There's no need. It, if, if you go in with a clear vision and a plan of who my customer is, it becomes, instead of me trying to make money off of people, it becomes, how can I get items to serve those people? Yes. And when you have clear direction, it makes buying and selling so much easier because I'm not trying to sell the world. I'm just trying to sell to this one little corner of the world. Uh-huh. It, it changes the game. It really does. Exactly. 
She's never felt so hurt auctioneer. in her life. Like, as I an, when I was an auctioneer, like this is one thing I learned as an auctioneer because I had to learn the skills. Like when I'm auctioneering, I'm not going to sell like, cause at the auction, you know, we were value seller auction. So we were selling everything. However, I'm not going to sell the tractor to the little old grandma that's looking at the porcelain. Mm. Yeah. Different market. I've got to talk to them different. I've got to, you know, source items differently. I've got to look at them different. Oh. So the words that you use also makes a difference when you're doing yep. your, uh, your ads. If it's men, men use like will be drawn to different words than women. Or there's there's so much that can go into this, but you have to know your target market before. And you I watched anything. at the auction that I went to recently. I watched the homeowner get really upset because they were skipping tables. And at the end, lady was like, the auctioneer lady. She was like. There are 20 people here. Those 20 people do not care about the tools that are on that table. They want the home decor that's over here. So I'm not going to auction everything for a dollar just because you want me to go and order. She's like, that's not, that's not, this is my business. That's not how we do it. Yeah. You got to know your audience and who's there. And then later on, a bunch of men showed up and they sold all the tools. There you go. And they probably (laughs) sold it at a premium price because that's what they were there for. Like, yep. this is auction, like this is how it's it's selling 101 it's like you got to sell the right product you have to have the right product to the right customer and you have to make a compelling offer where they're willing to pay a premium price yep. so the way i auctioned off like tractors and home decor at a public auction is completely different than the way i'm going to sell off things at this charity auction i'm about ready to do my audience yes. is different one i'm selling to farmers and just you know collectors this charity one i'm selling to millionaires and billionaires like, mm-hmm. it's, oh, a, it's a completely different audience so i have to change how i'm selling things yep wow awesome Yo, awesome y'all. all right listen this i knew this was going to be good but this has been an amazing episode and something tells me, Aaron, that we're going to have you back because you have. I was just thinking that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, you're going to be one of our comebacks that we have, like Stuart. And yeah, you're you're going to just so you know, just so I appreciate put that. There now, you're going to you're going to come back because. And when he comes back, he will be in that red suit. I'm just saying <laughs> like, right. there needs to be. <laughs> If if you come to boss in the end, if you decide to come to boss for even some of it, Hang on. yeah, we want to see it. You what? I'll, I'll see I what had I can technical do. difficulties. I was like, is this thing on? <laughs> top, top, top. Yep. Yes, our podcast I, people don't. I, I don't know even want to. I didn't even want to mention this, but yeah. I, we have to have you back to talk about mission statements and ideal customers because yeah. I just I think your opinion is so amazing. Her list of notes just got way longer. So early next year, I'm sure we'll have you on. We'll be more focused, I guess. No, it's fantastic. I, I, I love, I am very passionate about this type of stuff. Like this is, so I mean, great. like it, 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 because when you do it right, this can literally change your life. Like, yeah. so if there's, I'll say that one, like if we got to wrap up, I understand. But um, for people who are listening to this, if you want to learn more about how to build your ideal customer, listen to consignment chats. But there's a book I want you to go read. It's a book that makes this very crystal clear and very simple. It's called $100 Million Offers by Alex Hermosi. Um, it is very crystal clear on how to help you build your ideal, uh, your customer avatar, but then how to actually take your products and create a compelling offer to help you increase your sales and your value of the item itself. It is such a valuable book. Well, right. well, for, we might be looking at that for a book club then. We'll go check that out. Before, before Libby froze again, as she just froze, for those of you on a podcast, we keep losing her. But <laughs> before Libby froze, I saw her writing and something tells me we're going to do a book club on this. I, I, that's what I couldn't hear anything you guys were saying for the past minute. But I was like, guess what our next book club, book club. is going to be? So, yeah. We've done yeah. Pop It First. We've done The Slight Edge. We're doing The Pumpkin Plan right now. Um, we did building a story brand. Have you checked that one out yet? I love that book. Yes, that is such it. a great book about building yes. brand with story. Yes. Yeah. Highly yeah. recommend that book. 
So we we'll let you know when we do the uh, next book club. When we do that, you need to come yeah. come join us and get in it. <laughs> yeah, or maybe even the I resellers newsletter will be in there. <laughs> right <laughs> there, we go. Right, um, y'all. It's really as you can tell, we're having a difficult time cutting this episode off because we're having so much fun because. As we've told you guys on many episodes, when you go to these reseller conferences, you are with your people and the the whole group are your people. And it's such a great thing when you're in this business and you feel alone that you find people that think like you and feel like you. But then every now and then, or not every now and then, but every time you also find that step above of people who really become your group. And clearly we were meant to meet Aaron and Aaron was meant to be a part of us because everything that came out of your mouth is in the history of our episodes. And it is so wonderful to have you reword and state that from you in your way, because it's extra special weirdo. Extra special. Extra special. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> can I have that as like a badge, like extra special weirdo? Like Yes, <laughs> extra special weirdo fan. He's our extra special weirdo consignment chats fan. Absolutely. We'll have to get him a tie clip for when he's wearing his suit. Yes. I love it. Yes. I love it. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Aaron, we cannot thank you enough for taking the time to join us because yeah. this has been so much fun. Thank well, you. Well, thank you for having me. This has been an absolute blast. Seriously, I like you guys are amazing. I love what you guys are doing. So, if there's anything I could do to help you out, just please let me know. And same goes back to you. And guys, make sure you check out those links and get signed up for the newsletter that will not drive your inbox insane. It is yes. quality stuff that comes when it's meaningful. So there you yes. have it. All right. You have a cup near you or a mug or something? Because we cheer. We toast at the end. If not, grab something that'll work. All right. Here we go. <laughs> we've seen, right. we've <laughs> seen worse. We've seen worse. <laughs> <laughs> We've had all kinds of things. All right. Um, <laughs> Until next time, y'all. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks for joining Libby, Molly, and Samantha, the ladies of Consignment Chats, as we build a resourceful community of collaborative resellers. Find all the ways to connect with us on consignmentchats.com. Episodes are available on YouTube and anywhere you get your podcasts. In addition, Join our free, private Facebook community.